turn to James chapter 4. Hopefully in the upcoming weeks we'll have more singing for you. Uh, seems like everybody's been touched with a little bit of sinus trouble or <laughs> cough or something or other. Um, we're praying and asking the Lord to touch us so we'll be able to get back to singing like we would like to. Amen. James chapter 4 tonight, we're going to read here um, the first 10 verses here and try to preach a message from um, mainly from verse number 8. The Bible says in James chapter 4, everybody there say amen. 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 James chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible says, From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even your lust. That war in your members, you lust and you have not, you kill and desire to have, and you cannot obtain, you fight and war, you have not because you ask not, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust. The adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the Scripture saith in vain, The Spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. We'll stop reading right there tonight, and I want to, if I can, draw your attention to Verse number 8. The Bible said, uh, and you've heard me quote this verse many a time, and I've preached on it several times uh, down through the years. But it says uh, in that verse, uh, at the first part, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Amen. Now, this is talking to the sinner. I should say this is talking to the saint. Uh, the sinner, uh, God drawed himself close to them to begin with. And, uh, and he used the Spirit of God to draw the sinner to him. But here James is referring to those that are saved that, have, that need to get close to God or need to get back in fellowship with the Lord to draw nigh to God. And it's like when you take a step toward the Lord, uh, he'll take a, a step or two toward you. Uh, this is the way that James puts it, draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. I'd like to preach on that I can, if I can tonight with the help of the Lord. Drawing nigh to God. Now, drawing, to, drawing nigh to God will do three things that's mentioned in this verse. Number one, the very simple thing is it will get you closer. Amen. When you draw, draw nigh to the Lord, it'll, it'll get you closer. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to say that Everybody that's saved and born again in the family of God, I don't care how close they are, they need to get closer. Yeah. We as uh, an individual, uh, a personality or a person, individual person, we need to get closer to the Lord. We, as a body of believers, we as a church need to get closer to the Lord. We, our families need to get closer yes. to the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> you know, the Bible tells us there in that verse, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. So it's very obvious that what drawing nigh will do, it will get you closer. Amen. Amen. Then not only will it get you closer, but it will get you cleaner. 
The Bible says, draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Now, I want to say this. You can't get close to God unless you get clean. He, uh, amen. He's a righteous God. He's a holy God. He demands cleanliness, amen. I'm talking about spiritually, amen. I think we ought to be clean spirit. Uh, physically, is you know, uh, they, 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 uh, they once said that, mama said that cleanliness is next to godliness, amen. <coughs> I know that's not in the Bible, but uh, in, in the text here, it gives the thought there uh, uh, that people need to be clean, amen. amen. He says, cleanse, uh, you, uh, it says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Amen. Now, he's not talking. Now, I had a preacher tell me uh, uh, back this past summer, he said, nowhere in the Bible does it call a Christian or a saved person a sinner. James just did. Amen. And, and, you know, uh, sometimes we look as though, uh, as though we have not been saved. Amen. Right, and that's why he says there, cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Amen. Amen. And he's talking to saved people. And so uh, drawing nigh to God will get you closer. Amen. Drawing nigh to God will get you cleaner. Amen. Number three, drawing nigh to God will give you comfort. Amen. Amen. He says in verse eight, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, ye you double-minded. Now, with that in mind, when if, you, if we purify our hearts, it gives the idea here that you won't be double-minded. Now, everybody here is double-minded. Amen. Everybody here that's saved by the grace of God, you're double-minded. Everybody here that's saved by the grace of God, they have a split personality. That's right. Amen. Amen. You still deal with the old man right. after the new man comes in. We said Amen. something about that this morning. But I want to say, listen, if we do uh, uh, what the Bible says here and purify our hearts, amen, uh, it will comfort us, amen. And it will give comfort, amen. amen. And so that's three things that drawing nigh to God will do. Now, in drawing nigh to God, number one, there's the beginning of drawing nigh to God. In other words, we as Christians must take the first step. Now, the Bible teaches us here in that verse, draw nigh to God. And he'll draw nigh to you, amen. Listen. In order for you to begin to draw nigh to God, there must be a hunger. Right. The Bible talks about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the multitude in John chapter six. Uh, they would have never been. They would have never been fed had they not been hungry. Amen. I want to tell you. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter five, verse six: "Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall." be filled. I, I want to say tonight, listen, uh, at the beginning of drawing nigh to God, you must have a hunger to draw nigh. Then not only must you have a hunger, but you must uh, uh, you must be humble, amen. There must be humility. In verse 6 that we read here in the text in James 4, he said, but God giveth more grace wherever he's, God resists the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble, amen. We need to humble ourselves, amen. The Bible tells us that in verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. And so they, uh, when you begin to draw nigh to God, number one, they must be a hunger. They must be humility. And number three, they must be holiness. When you read uh, these verses, uh, when you read verse number uh, eight, when it talks about, Cleansing yourself and then purifying yourselves. Uh, you know, uh, that's uh, us making, uh, uh, getting closer to God and God making us more holy, amen. Yeah. And uh, we surely need uh, to be more holy. You know, the, uh, Peter talked about that uh, in his uh, writings. He said in 1 Peter uh, uh, chapter number 1, verse 13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and uh, hope to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which called you is holy, so be holy 
in all manner of conversation because it is written, be ye holy. Amen. Amen. It says, be ye holy for I am holy is what the Lord said. Amen. And so uh, that is the beginning of drawing nigh to God. We ought to all desire to be closer to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Number two, a lot of times um, when we think about the beginning of drawing nigh, the problem is, number two, there's the battle of drawing nigh to God. Verse number nine said, be afflicted and, uh, and mourn and weep. And let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness, amen. Now, when you think about that, that don't seem like that's going to be a, a good thing. I want to tell you something. Listen, uh, God has to shake things up every once in a while, amen, uh, to bring us to the point to where uh, we can see uh, that we need to, uh, help from the Lord, amen. Now, the battle of drawing nigh to God, number one, there is the battle with self. In the first few verses that we read in chapter four, uh, it was talking about the flesh, amen. And I want to tell you something we all know tonight. Listen, the flesh don't want to draw near to God, amen. He said, there from what whence cometh wars and fightings among you, come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members, amen. You lust and you have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not, amen. <clears throat> he says, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. What is that? That is just the flesh. That's just the flesh. Right. Listen, we fight the flesh every day. And I want to tell you something. Listen, there is a battle going on uh, with self to try to keep us from drawing nigh to God. Amen. Amen. The flesh does not want to draw nigh to the Lord. Then not only is there battle uh, with self, but there's the battle with society. Listen, the world don't want you to draw nigh. Right. The verse, uh, verse number four in our text today, it said, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You see, the world don't want you to be different than them. Amen. There's a lot of proclaiming Christians, uh, uh, people that uh, that uh, they profess to uh, be a Christian, uh, and but they they got so listen, uh, they they got so many things in their life. And I don't know whether they saved or not, but a lot of people that don't look like they're saved because uh, they do the same things that lost people do. They go the same places that lost people go. They think just like lost people do. Amen. I mean, they vote like lost people do, amen. Uh, you know, it, that's just uh, uh, mind-boggling to me uh, for a person to claim to be saved. Uh, and I want to tell you something. Listen, there's a battle going on. Right. It's like them people uh, during Joshua's time. You know, uh, you had uh, uh, you had the uh, tribe of Reuben uh, uh, and Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh. You remember that? Story over there in the book of Joshua. And uh, in that story, uh, you know, you had uh, the, the two and a half tribes that went back on the other side of Jordan after they won the victory. Uh, and, uh, and and they, they they made a statement over there that you're trying to make our children uh, look bad. And, and you, know, you know, that's the way it always is. That crowd that don't want to look, uh, that don't want to live right, they said, but... Uh, but uh, they said we we've got uh, we built our own altar, and, and they said, uh, but it wasn't for sacrifice. And, and that crowd said, but that it may be a witness between us and you and our generation after us that um, <clears throat> we might do the service of the Lord before Him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifices and with your uh, with our peace offering that your children may not say. To our children in time to come, ye have no part in the Lord. Now, you know, that's, uh, but you know, that's just the way it is. People out there in the world, uh, people that go to church and don't live right, they don't want you to say anything about 
what they were doing. Amen. They don't listen. They don't want a preacher to preach on sin. Uh, listen, they don't want them to say anything about it because listen, they they don't want nobody messing up, uh, messing in their life. Amen. Uh, they say you judging me. Well, it's not the preacher judging you; it's the Word of God judging you. Amen. They don't like that. And I want to tell you, listen, there's a battle going on with self. There's a battle going on with society. There's a lot of people out there in the world that go to church that's not saved. Amen. And they become a part of society. And listen, they don't want to draw on out of God. They want to live like they want to live. Amen. We can't be that way, folks. There's a battle going on. And it's difficult. Because a lot of that people in society I'm talking about is our own family members. Our own flesh and blood. Uh, they, 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 they're the ones that strike up the conversation, not us. You, you don't ever go around family and start, uh, you know, uh, conversations about what people should do and what they shouldn't do. Most times, grown people know anyway. Right. Amen. Right. Now they're doing it in your presence. Amen. Uh, you can tell them, Amen. Uh, you know, but you need to have the, uh, you need to have the mind of God when you do talk to people about. Those different things, but there's a battle going on, yeah. and it and it and it's bothersome because it's people that we love, Amen. And and, and we and some of them they know better. Right. That, that's why it bothers us, Amen. Amen. The battle there's the battle with self, and the battle of drawing out of God. Then there's the battle of society, and then all of us have the battle with Satan. The Bible said in verse seven, "Submit yourselves therefore to God." Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. Right there in that text. Gives us an antidote for when the devil gives us trouble. Amen. Amen. It said submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil. Amen. Amen. Now we know how Jesus resisted the devil. He did it with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I want to say tonight, listen here. We, listen, we, we, there's a battle going on. And the devil does not want you to draw nigh to God. Listen, he can't do anything about your soul. But he, he wants to keep your testimony dirty. So that other people say, well, if that person is going to heaven, I don't need to do anything. I used to witness to a man years ago. That's what he used to say all the time. That was a dear saint of God in this church's uh, kinfolk. I, and I'd talk to him. And he'd say, preacher, if everybody clear, he's going to heaven. I ain't got nothing to worry about. I said, there's the problem. Everybody that comes to clear, you ain't going to heaven. Right. Only those that are saved Amen. are going to heaven. Amen. So we find the battle of drawing nigh to God. There's the battle with self, society, and Satan. So we have the beginning of drawing nigh to God. The battle of drawing nigh to God. Then there's the blessings of drawing nigh to God. Now, the Bible said in Psalm 73, verse 28, this is what the psalmist said, but it is good for me to draw near to God. It's a good thing. Boy, I'm going to tell you, we ought to draw near, amen, as much as possible. Amen. Amen. I mean every day. Uh, like the song says, draw me nearer, nearer, nearer. Uh, amen. amen. The Bible teaches us, um, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews chapter 4 at verse number 16. There is the blessings of drawing nigh to God. Listen, there's the blessings of being able to feel His presence. Amen. I know He's with us all the time. He's with the child of God all the time. But I can't feel Him all the time. I love to feel His presence, though. And if I draw near to Him, amen, it seems like I can feel Him, amen. amen. I remember when I was a young boy, my daddy would come home and pastor the church. From the time I was in the sixth grade, all the way up till 2009. Amen. And, uh, you know, uh, but my dad always worked a, a secular job. He worked in a, in a printing uh, company. 
And um, the type of printing that they did, they printed on a little, a, a little roll of thin paper. You remember uh, back in the 60s and 70s and 80s, they, uh, at the, on the bottom side of the men's pair of socks, they was uh, a wax type ink that was ironed on there. And it, was, it would have the ingredients of what the sock was made out of. <coughs> then later on, on the white socks, they would have decals ironed on there with like a little, uh, it was like a waxy like plastic like uh, type melted thing that was ironed on there. That's the type of printing that my dad did. And he'd have to make that ink and he'd make it out of all different kinds of uh, uh, chemicals and, uh, and put the color in there, put the, uh, that waxy type stuff in there and he'd mix it up. I, I always knew what my dad smelled like. He had that smell where he worked. I, listen, I, I got so close to him. I know, I knew, I, I almost smell it right now. I knew what he smelled like. That's how close we ought to be to God. Amen. That we know what he smells like. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you something. Listen, the blessings of drawing nigh to God, one of the blessings is being able to feel his presence. Then uh, not only that, being able to feel his protection. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, as long as I was close to my daddy, I felt like nothing could happen to me. I mean, I know, he, I, listen, I know now that he couldn't whoop everybody, but then I thought he could. Amen. Amen. I mean, I thought that. You know, I, I, I told kids all the time, I'll tell my daddy. I don't know if you ever said that or not, but hey, it worked a lot of times. Amen. It worked with my brother, that's for sure. Yeah. I want to tell you, listen, the blessings of drawing nigh to God is you feel his presence, amen. You feel that protection. The closer you are, is the more safe you feel, amen. Oh, I'm telling you tonight, listen, it may be that you have kind of strayed away from the Lord. It may be that thoughts in your mind has kind of gotten you away from the Lord. Maybe your thinking ain't been right. Maybe your feelings ain't been right. I don't know, but I want to say, listen, we all need to get back closer to the Lord. Yeah. And to help us out. <laughs> Not only have that feeling of his presence, that feeling of protection, but that, what about that feeling of peace? I go back to my dad as an example again. When I was a little fellow, I'm telling you right now, gave me peace of mind. Now, I don't have much mind now. Uh, me and Carol's about to lose our mind trying to raise these kids. We went in the Dollar General the other day, and Carol got frustrated. We laughed. We, I mean, we just laughed and laughed. She got frustrated. Uh, you know how most Dollar Generals are. It's messy. Ain't nothing organized. Ain't nothing on the shelf. <laughs> and I looked at her. I said, I can't find it. She said, I can't find nothing either. She said, this is the sorriest Walmart I've ever been in. <laughs> and then she realized what she said. <laughs> and we got to laugh, but we just stood there and laughed for a while. I mean, it, it was the sorriest Walmart we had ever been in. I mean, it was terrible. <coughs> we called it Walmart for the rest of the time we was in Burlington. But, I, you know, it's just, uh, you know, sometimes you, you have those days, amen. But I'm glad after a little while we get along with the Lord, amen. You, you get to feel in that. I'm going to tell you what, any time you, you get his presence, you get near to him, you, you feel you feel that protection, then that peace comes over you. you. You ever, you know, like I heard the preacher say the other day, I, I want to preach that message if God will ever let me uh, preach it. But that guy was talking about, you know, the way we think. Our minds are so messed up because we think, we think uh, you know, about things that ain't never going to come to pass. And we worry about it. And, uh, you know, we... <laughs> You know, we, we worry about, you know, who's going to be president next. And so I, I remember Miss Perry she'd sit and watch Fox News all day long. And, uh, you know, it's just, she probably worried herself to death about uh, different things going to happen in the world. I'm going to tell you something right now. We, at this, all we can do is vote. 
I don't know if you can count on that, but we have the we have the opportunity to vote whether it counts or not. I don't know, but I do say this: Listen, God's still on the throne. We win in the end, Amen. And I want to tell you something right now: the best thing we can do in these days in which we live is draw nigh to God and stay there, Amen. I'm just telling you, that's what we need to do tonight. We need to draw nigh to God, because the Bible says that God will draw nigh to us. Let's everyone stand tonight.